I did it for the children. I did it for the money. I did it for the depression of spirit and the cessation of hope. I did it because I could, because it was there. I'd do it again. Oops, I did it again. What have I done? What have I done to deserve this? What have I done with my keys, my youth? What am I going to do while you're at tennis camp? What are we going to do with the body? I mean, what happened with the Lichtenberg figures is that there was this initial kind of like burst where it was just really easy to write these poems. It was like, I, it was like you know, Jack Spicer talks about the poet taking dictation, right? It was like somebody else is speaking through you and you're just writing it down. Like I was at the Waldrop's, you're kind of heroes of mine in this amazing house of theirs on 71 Elm Grove Avenue, which is like so full of books, it seems like it's built of books. And Rosemary gave me a stack of books. I mean, I'd also like had a lot of their wine. And I read one of the books that was by Marjorie Wellish, who's now a friend and also someone I teach with at Brooklyn College. And I just wrote in the margins of the book. I just, I just kind of wrote a bunch of poems. The next day I typed them up. I thought they were kind of interesting. And I didn't have a sense if it was like one kind of long poem or if it was several little poems or if it was garbage. The poems became sonnets pretty quickly because I felt like the trajectory of an individual poem was around 14 lines, and I wanted to stabilize some rules in the manuscript that I could kind of wrestle with. So I started to impose the form of the 14th line, and also to think about the volta, which is the moment in a sonnet where there's a turn, like a thematic turn or a formal turn, and to think about how I might play with that idea of a quick turn. And I had this sense of seriality or sequentiality, or like the book is a larger architecture. That's when I felt like I had I was kind of participating in the conversation of poetry in a different way. With the first book, you're, you don't really know if you can do it. Like you, you have a kind of constant anxiety about whether or not you have something to contribute to the conversation. And that anxiety, I mean, it can, it can ruin your life, but it's also really generative. Like it's a kind of discipline. I wrote those first poems when I was a senior in college, an undergraduate at Brown, and then I stayed at Brown for the MFA program. And I moved across town and I lived with my friend Cyrus Consul, who's a really great poet. Well, we were both always like, we always were writing under the sign of crisis. We were always threatening to quit. We always claimed we weren't getting anything done. Like now when I look back, like we had a real and kind of intense practice. We were more collaborative than, than, than competitive. I would work on a poem and I would, you know, take it to his room five yards away and we'd have, we'd have a conversation about it. Really, the reason why we never knew if we were doing any work is because we never really had a clear separation between work and leisure. We were always trying to desperately be equal to these first books. But the thing was that the first poems came, you know, effortlessly. And then it took me like four years of self-lacerating torture to write the rest of them. I mean, the Lichtenberg figures has a pretty central relationship to violence. Topeka, Kansas was a shockingly violent place by the time I left. It was like fourth in per capita homicide, and it had become a kind of meth hub. And I was also writing those poems kind of in the shadow of things like Columbine High School that for my generation, you know, weren't at all shocking. I had a deep intuition as a poet that there was an intimate relationship between um, the detachment of language from reality and the use of language as a kind of instrument of violence. If you're referring to a bomb as a daisy cutter, it's easier to distance yourself from the embodied reality of the consequence of a policy. So the kind of violence of the sonnet and the violence I did to the sonnet were supposed to be mimetic of the violence the poems were exploring and describing in the country. Well, the question of how you end a book or a series is a really vexed and crucial question, right? The question of closure. I tried to quit writing the Lichtenberg figures for a while. Like I thought I was done. I thought I had like 50 or so that I wanted. But then when I wrote new poems, it was clear that all I was doing was writing into the sequence, you know? So like the sequence wasn't done with me. And then once you have like enough of a sequence, like once you start imagining a book, then, you know, I would like print out the poems and put them on the wall and like think about how the shapes looked at different 
moments in the manuscript or I would have a sense of like what it was missing. So I had to keep working. And then there's a certain point where I felt like, you know, the poem, like there were just no more of them in me. I was really like relieved to find that I had exhausted the tendency and now I was gonna do something else or nothing for a while. Publication, even on a really small poetry scale, also changes your relationship to your own work. Like it helps you feel finished. You know, like now I'm not going back into that work. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it's the final way of estranging it from you. It no longer seems like it's just something in your head. It feels like it's an object in the object world. I felt really lucky um, that, I, that I, you know, I heard from the poets that counted for me and I was able to, um, to kind of like send my book to writers I admired and be in conversation with them. You know, that's kind of what, that's the public part of publication in a way, right? Like no one's gonna make a million dollars with a poetry book, but, but you, you can kind of make a life. It can help you make a life. I kind of always assume that you don't write the poem you want to write, you know, or you don't make the book you, you want to make. And on the one hand, that can be kind of like depressing or whatever, right? But on the other hand, that's actually like quite freeing because it means you discover something in the act of composition that you didn't know in advance. But like generally, I think of art as really about um, trying to actualize impossible desires with form. And you always fail to like make the virtual actual. You always fail to, you know, transform the world through your poem or whatever. But the failure itself um, can be beautiful or pleasurable and it can kind of exercise imaginative faculties that aren't exercised when you're just making things you know how to make. Mm -hmm.